Hello. In this video, we would like to calculate the empirical formula of a particular chemical compound. And then in the next video, part two, we want to calculate its chemical formula. So we start off with a certain piece of information. We know that we have a compound that has two and only two elements in it. One of them is nitrogen. And it turns out that this particular compound is 30.45% nitrogen. And we also know that this particular compound has one other element, which is oxygen. And the oxygen contributes 69.55% of the mass of the compound. When we're talking about these percentages, we always mean the percentage mass. Now, to calculate the empirical formula from this data, we have to immediately make one assumption. And the assumption that we're going to make is, I will state it and then I will show why we do this particular assumption. We want to assume that we have a total mass of exactly 100 grams of our compound. The reason why we can do this, why we can make this assumption, is because the percent mass is an intensive property. That means it doesn't matter how much material we have, the percent mass of each element will not change. The reason why we specifically choose 100 grams will become clearer in just a second. So now assuming that we have 100 grams of the compound, how much mass of nitrogen do we have? Well, we're told in the problem that this particular compound is 30.45% nitrogen. So one way to think of what that means is that means that 30.45 grams of the compound out of every 100 grams of the compound is going to be nitrogen. So when we take 30.45% of 100 grams, that's equivalent to multiplying this particular fraction, 30, this counts as the 30.45% part. In fact, let me just put that in red there to remind us. That's equivalent to this particular fraction here. And when we say of, we can immediately translate that into mathematical language as multiplication. So 30.45% of 100 grams is this fraction multiplied times 100 grams. And we noticed quite conveniently that 100 grams and 100 grams will cancel. So we're going to be left with 30.45 grams of nitrogen in this particular compound. Now the fact that we go almost directly from 30.45% nitrogen to 30.45 grams of nitrogen is Part of the reason why we specifically chose the mass of 100 grams. Using the fact that the percent mass is an intensive property, we could well have chosen any mass that we desired. We could have chosen one gram or a thousand grams or 265 grams. It just turns out that if we choose 100 grams, we can almost immediately write, go from the 30.45% to 30.45 grams, almost, but not entirely, without thinking about what we've done. Continuing in the same vein, we can determine what the mass of oxygen is going to be in this particular compound. We notice that the percentage of oxygen is 69.5. 5%. So again, just to show 
that this is a legitimate method, that means that 69.55 grams, I mean 69.55 grams of oxygen, out of a total of 100 grams of the compound. So this corresponds to the 69.55%. And since we're going to take that percentage of the 100 total grams, we can write it out this way. And we notice that we can cancel 100 grams with 100 grams, and we're left with a total of 69.55% grams of oxygen in this particular compound if we've chosen a total mass of 100 grams. And just to summarize here, we've determined also that we have 30.45 grams of nitrogen. In our next step, we want to determine how many moles of each element are present in this 100 gram sample, knowing that we have 69.55 grams of oxygen and 30.45 grams of nitrogen. We start with our 30.45 grams of nitrogen, and then we're going to use the fact that the atomic mass of nitrogen is 14.00674 grams. And the way that we can write this as notation is that we put the 14.00674 grams of nitrogen in the denominator, and we put one mole of nitrogen in the numerator. Now notice that in this particular case, one mole of nitrogen is equivalent or equal to 14.00674 grams of nitrogen. Therefore, the numerator and the denominator of this particular fraction are equal, even though that isn't immediately obvious. Whenever we have a fraction whose numerator and denominator are equal, but not equal to zero, then we can say that this particular fraction is equal to the number one. The number one is our identity element for multiplication. Therefore, if I multiply any number by this fraction, I may have changed its appearance, but I have not changed its value. Once I do that, I get 2.174 moles of nitrogen. And to verify that, let's be sure to cancel the units of grams of nitrogen with grams of nitrogen, and I'm left with the units of moles of nitrogen, which is what I had wanted. We can continue in the same vein with the oxygen atoms. So for oxygen, we know that we have 69.55 grams of oxygen. And we also know from consulting the periodic table that one mole of oxygen at a mass of 15.9994 grams of oxygen. And again, using the same reasoning that we had done up here, since one mole of oxygen is equivalent to and equal to 15.9994 grams of oxygen, this particular fraction that we have put in parentheses is equal to the number one. And if I multiply any particular value by the number one, I do not change the value. I can cancel the units of grams of oxygen with grams of oxygen, and I will get an answer with the proper units of moles of oxygen. So this particular value will end up being 4.347 moles of oxygen. In this step, we are going to make use of the fact that in a chemical compound, that the ratios 
of the numbers of atoms of each type of element are going to be whole numbers. We get this from the Dalton's Atomic Theory of 1808. As a practical matter, when we're solving problems, the way that we do that is as follows. We make a list of the number of moles of each element. In this particular compound, we only have two elements, but we could have a compound with many elements. We make a list and we want to observe what is the smallest value of the number of moles for any particular element. So since 2.174 is the smallest number on the left here, what we want to do is take each of the values for every single element and divide through by 2.174 to get the relative ratios of the elements. So in this particular case for nitrogen, it's somewhat trivial because we're going to take the 2.174 moles of nitrogen and simply divide them by 2.174. And once we do that, we get one mole of nitrogen. Admittedly, that looks pretty trivial, but that is an essential step of the solution. A little more sophisticated step for the oxygen, we start with the 4.347 moles of oxygen. And again, we're going to divide by 2.174. If we do that, we get 1.9995 moles of oxygen. This is a typical situation when we're solving empirical formulas. Recall that according to Dalton's atomic theory, the ratios have to be whole numbers. And we often get numbers that are very close to, but not quite whole numbers. In the case, where we have, you can see that 1.9995 is really, really close to two. So we round this particular value to two. If, for example, the number were 1.5, where it's equally between one and two, we could not do that. We also have to be careful if we're 1.3, for example. Um, but this is so close to being two, we can so within experimental error, we can round it to two. Then we notice that we can immediately write down the empirical formula. Notice that we have one mole of nitrogen and two moles of oxygen. So therefore, our empirical formula looks like NO2. We can say N1O2, but we always omit a subscript of one to save space. So we would write this more elegantly as NO2. And therefore, the empirical formula for this particular compound is going to be NO2. Tune in for part two to see how we can determine the chemical formula for this particular compound. Thank you for your attention. Have a good one.